so ENZ alkenes. Uh, the first thing we want to know is that E stands for different, different. Z stands for same, right? And this just implies that this is cis and this is trans. Now, if you somehow cannot remember that, uh, or cannot distinguish between E and Z, remember this little slogan here, where uh, and it says that Z, same, Z. And this same here implies that uh, this would be the same, which means that it's cis. So if you could remember this moniker here, then obviously you know that E would be a different one. So with that being said, let's look at a couple examples. So what if you had this molecule? And you want to determine if it's E or Z, right? And if you had this molecule and you want to determine if it's E or Z. Well, the first thing you want to do is cleave that carbon-carbon double bond. So I want you to draw a line through it and then assign priority groups. Now here we have a CH3. So coming down this bond here, the first thing we hit is a carbon. Going up this bond here, the first thing we hit, a, we, the first thing we hit is a hydrogen. So again, carbon will always beat out hydrogen. And so therefore, carbon gets priority group number one, the hydrogen gets priority group number two. Again here, priority group number two, this ethyl group here will get priority group number one because you could imagine going from <coughs> this carbon where the alkene is bonded to, uh, going out, you're going to hit a CH2 or, or, or that carbon first. So again, that will be much more heavy than the hydrogen. And now you want to take a look horizontally if your numbers match. If your numbers do not match or they're different, that would imply that your stuff is trans, right? So we could see that going from one horizontally, we're going to two different numbers. So therefore, this will be your trans alkene, right? This will be trans. How about this one? What if you had something like this? All right, would this be cis or trans? Well, I like to draw my hydrogens. So I'm going to draw my hydrogens here. All right, and then all I'm going to do is cleave the double bond. So cleave the double bond and assign priority groups. Well, again, there's a CH3 here, right? The first thing you hit is a carbon. So therefore, carbon will be much more, much more heavy than a hydrogen. So this will be one, and this will be priority group number two. Again, this will be priority group number one. This will be priority group number two because, again, of the fact that carbon is heavier than hydrogen. And again, now we could see that going horizontally across our numbers both match. So two is going to two, one is going to one. So this would imply that this would be the cis alkene a cis alkene rather so what if you had this molecule you had a fluorine here and an amine group here uh and kind of this alpha group here would this be cis or trans well again i like to join my hydrogens when i'm thinking about this All right so i'm going to clean my double bond and then assign priority groups. Well, again, a nitrogen will always be heavier than a hydrogen. So this group gets priority group number one. Your hydrogen gets priority group number two. Now over here is a, over here, it's a little bit tricky, but not really, right? Stemming from the carbon going out, we hit a CH2 or a carbon first, then two hydrogens going out, we hit a fluorine first. So a carbon versus a fluorine. A, car, a fluorine is much more heavier than a carbon. So this will get, the fluorine will get priority group number one. This whole ethyl group will get priority group number two. All right, so again, looking at your numbers, your numbers match horizontally going on both sides. So this will be your uh, Z alkene or cis, zane, right? How about this? Let's take, a look, let's take a look at this. Very interesting. You know, CH3 and two hydrogens here with the H and a C, uh, CH3. I want you to take a look at this versus this two hydrogens here remember this a, a trans alkene will be much more lower in energy than a cis alkene in general so this would be much more stable than this alkene here so just remember that and you could also look at this. So on, a, on an exam, a typical question might be something like this, where you might give in this molecule. 
All right, and I'm just making up a molecule here. But you might be given this molecule here. And they'll give you something like this. Right? And they'll ask you, okay, which one of these is lower in energy? And again, uh, your trans alkene will be always lower in energy. And to prove it to yourself, what you could do is actually draw the chair conformations for both. And you'll see that on one of the on one of the carbons, you're gonna have that you're gonna have that CH3 in an equator in an equatorial position, which is turns out to be much more stable than both your um, uh, CH3 being an axial or, or 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 such. So just remember that. A cis, a cis alkene is much more higher in energy than a trans alkene and so your trans alkene is much more stable because you could imagine those big CH3 groups being uh, in very different positions away from each other versus being on the same side.